Hey, beautiful creatives. If you are in the summer doldrums and you are feeling the need to be inspired, to pull out some different mediums and just play and explore, this is going to be the perfect video for you because I show you little bits of different mediums that I worked with this week in different ways, some in the studio, some in my art nest, some outside in plein air. Um, it was a full week. I'm really grateful for everything that I was able to accomplish this week. And I'm going to share it with you in this video. So I hope that you enjoy it. I would really appreciate it if you left me a thumbs up and subscribed to help my channel regain its position. Um, YouTube's algorithm is mad at me because I have skipped a few videos lately due to illness. So the thumbs ups and comments and subscribing really would help me out. Thanks so much, guys. Here's the video. I have been having so much fun with pastels lately. I can't even tell you how much fun it's been. I've done some plein air work with them. And if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen some of that. And some some of these paintings I'm going to show you, I did demos on my Patreon. Uh, so you could see the full demo of some of these paintings. But I have been using my Lyra um, water-soluble wax crayons and mixing them with the Sennelier pastels, the Mungio Gallery pastels, the Paul Rubens Haya and the Karen Dosh Neo Pastel. They all work really great together. And I'm just finding them really wonderful for doing really expressive work. So I'm gonna go over to my table and set my camera up in the stand and show you some of what I've been up to this week because it's a lot and it's very varied and um, I think you guys will find it really creatively stimulating. I know I have. I love dabbling in a variety of things and that's what sort of keeps my creative juices flowing. So let me set up the camera and show you what I've been up to. So before I do that, I thought I would just open these boxes and give you a glimpse of how gorgeous these are. So these are the Karen Dosh Neo Pastels. This was a gift from a viewer. Um, oh shoot, I can't think of her name right now and I'm so sorry about that, but last year, I think it was, a viewer sent me these as a gift and I just love them. I've really enjoyed them. This was, this is the Paul Rubens Haya set of pastels and these are so good if you love sennelier you will absolutely love these they are so buttery soft i have really been enjoying these as a top layer pastel i use something like karen dosh or the mungio uh, gallery pastels for the bottom layer and then the sennelier and the the uh, haya paul rubens for the top layers aren't they just gorgeous I just love these pastels. I would actually love to hear from you guys what pastels you like best in the comments. You know, I'm still relatively new to my pastel journey. I mean, I've played with them on and off for years, but this is the first time that I'm really just getting into them a lot and really enjoying them. So um, I'm particularly interested in a medium hard pastel um, that is high quality and that you can buy open stock because I know you can buy the Snellier open stock but it's very soft very expensive these I wish you could buy in open stock the Paul Rubens Haya but you can't um, the Mungio I don't think you can either I don't know about Karen Dosh I should look into that because I need like a medium hard brand that I can buy open stock. Um, yeah, okay, so let me show you some of what I've been up to this week. So for pastel paintings, I have these in a bunch of different sketchbooks and I'm probably gonna get lost trying to show you everything I wanna show you from different sketchbooks, but I think the last video I did with pastel on YouTube was when I got to the uh, Paul Rubens Haya 
and I did this pastel and I used that rubber tip blender. I was trying out different blending tools, but I ended up liking that rubber tip blender a lot. And so this demo, I'll try to remember to put a link up in the corner, but this is on YouTube. And then I've done a bunch of them on um, Patreon. I did in that video, I think it was, or maybe it was in one of the Patreon videos. I said I was going to get these makeup silicone makeup tools. Uh, actually, they're for nails, I think. And um, I did get these. I have not tried them yet because I've been painting so loosely. I haven't been doing any heavy blending like I was doing in that first pastel I showed you. But um, these look like they're going to be a lot of fun to play with. So I'll have to try those out. Maybe if this video doesn't run too long, I'll try those out a little bit for you guys. So, pastel paintings. Let's see, what have I done? This is um, something I'm going to show you later. This is... Oh, okay, first I'll show you these, which I have... I did a pastel video on Patreon where I showed these, but this is on Canson uh watercolor paper it's cold pressed so it has the texture so if you don't like that with pastel you won't you wouldn't like this it's 140 pound paper um five by five by 8.5 12 sheets i really enjoyed working on it i did enjoy the texture but not for all the time it was fun to do something different um but i did prefer the smoother canson mixed media paper which is this one so this is the Canson Mixed Media, uh, 9 by 12, 20 sheets, 138 pound or 224 grams. And this one I did, actually both of these I did um, as demos on Patreon. I might have done a high speed tease of these on YouTube. I don't even remember now, but I do the full, the full demo of these. And this is where I used the silicone blending tool a lot in this. And um, the, I really enjoyed working on this paper. I thought it was a great tech, just enough texture to grab and give you texture, but um, also very easy to fill in if you want it smooth, like where I rendered it here to show the reflections. And then I did a second looser one, which I, that this demo is also up on Patreon. There's two separate full-length demos. And I really love this looser one. I think this is a lot of fun. I think there's a lot of energy in it. I also used the blending tool on here, and it's a mixture of the different brands of pastel. Um, really fun. These were both really fun to do and really love this paper for doing pastel on. Okay, so that's the Canson ones. And then I did a plein air session where um, I did a video for my patrons, a plein air video session. So I went out and did three day lily paintings, three different ways and posted the demo with, th with three different types of materials and posted that demo for um, my patrons. So this is, the pastel one, super loose and expressive, really had fun with this. Love, love, love working this way with pastels. I mean, I'm, I just love everything about this. It was day lilies and there was some hosta lily blossoms coming up through it. Really pleased with these. I have sprayed these with my Sennelier uh, fixative. This is another pastel. I did not do this one in a demo. I just did this on my own, um, and sadly, I did it in this this uh, sketchbook that's really meant for just light, dry media. If I've talked about this on Patreon. It's not meant to be aggressively worked, and when I did this daylily uh, paint or pastel, I actually worked right through the paper on that one. But but this this again, really fun with pastels. Super enjoyed it. And this one with pastels. And 
Um, I'm trying to remember if this was one of the ones that was in the plen in the Patreon video or not. This, yes, I did a separate video on this for Patreon. Actually, I think I just uploaded it on um, Wednesday, last Wednesday. So this one has been uploaded. There's a bunch of um, different uh, videos that I've uploaded recently to Patreon with different mediums so but there's quite a few pastel ones if you like pastel um, and the thing with patreon is you can join for one month and binge watch and then uh cancel you know the idea of patreon really is to have patrons like in the olden days support artists and um i you can join mine for either five dollars a month or ten dollars a month it's totally up to you how much you want to support me i have decided to let people um choose according to what they can afford and they each either one that you choose you have access to all the material so these were the other um this is actually the one that I just uploaded Wednesday. Sorry, guys. I've been just up to so much. I'm a bit confused. Yes, so these were the plenier ones. Let's see. So that one. And that one. And then there was an ink one in the plenier video, which I'll show you. And this gouache one I just uploaded um on wednesday and this was with the cenex gouache which i'm really still loving i will you know that's this gouache and um i'm really loving that still i'll show you some more work i've done with that but um this was the ink one that i did so i did this with one of my fountain pens and there's a video up on Patreon now about my fountain pens. Um, I purchased some more and filled them with different inks, and I show you that on Patreon. And so that was ink brushes and the, the fountain pen. This one was also gouache. And this was... Um, so this was... Okay, I'll put a clip in here. I went up to, well, let me start with this one. This, uh, sorry to be jumping around so much. There's just so much that I've been up to. So these two paintings were done with my art toolkit. Zoom out a little. So this is my art toolkit that I take out when I do go plein air painting. And I was able to go out. My husband took me down to... Um, the Connecticut River landing, boat boat landing, um, not that long ago. And I sat and did some plein air painting. So I have, in my art toolkit, I have the folio palette filled with dry gouache and the, um, what is this called? The Explore palette filled with watercolor. And then I have, I also do have some M. Graham some really old, this is an old, old M. Graham palette that I've just started using again to try to use that up. And I forgot how much I love M. Graham. And then I keep a little container in here with some tubes of white and a white Posca pen and extra brush. I've got my water brushes, my other brushes and ink tents, some different pens and pencils in here. So this is, um, our toolkit contacted me and asked if I would like to be an affiliate of theirs. And um, of course I'm gonna say yes, because I absolutely love Art Toolkit and I love the products that they make. I love that they're an environmentally conscious small company. So I am going to, I haven't replied yet. I need to reply today. But um, as soon as that goes through, I will be able to permanently offer you guys discount codes on the Art Toolkit. So if you're thinking of getting an art toolkit, you might want to hang on a bit because I will be able to, I had given you a coupon code in the past that expired. Soon I will be able to give you a coupon code that does not expire. So if you're thinking of buying anything, um, that is coming soon. But so these two paintings, this one is the one that I did um, at the Connecticut River. And I'll put a little, uh, I'll put a, I don't think I did any video of that. I think I actually did a, um, 
an Instagram reel. So I'll either post the reel at the end so you can see where I was painting or I'll post some photos of the scene. But that was done with my dry gouache palette. And so much fun just to sit there with Dawn and we brought Toshi with us. It was really good for Toshi to get out and be stimulated. He's been really lonely and very quiet since his brother died. I haven't driven in ages and I came up to one of my favorite places and thought I might get some painting done. Um, it's a wildlife refuge not far from my house and um, because I haven't driven in so long the drive even though it was a short drive just wiped me out so I don't think I'm gonna get my painting gear out I don't know I'm kind of disappointed but I'm feeling so exhausted and I have spent a few days outside lately um, well yesterday <laughs> anyways and today so, hmm, it's pretty though. I thought I would share it with you. I love those willows over there. There's usually a lot of ducks and geese here, but um, this, all these lily pads, this is new. I haven't seen it so filled with them before. There's usually some, but this year they seem to have gone crazy. So maybe that's why there's no ducks or geese I'm not sure there was a heron over on that beaver dam when I got here but I just oh isn't that so pretty I would love to get my stuff out but I just don't think I have the energy to stand in the Sun and paint I may just take some pictures and then paint from those at home at least I drove, you know, that's a positive thing. I haven't felt well enough to drive in a long time. I went up to my favorite wetland spot. It's only like a 17 minute drive from here. Um, but when I got up there, I was really painfully exhausted. So I just couldn't, I did get out for a short walk, but I couldn't get my gear out and paint. And I felt really disappointed about that. But then I came back and I painted this in my art nest and I'll put a little clip um, to show you how I was set up in my art nest. And it was just sort of a memory of place. There's these old gnarled willows up there and I love them. I love those old crazy willows that are half falling apart. And there's pieces on the ground and then the water. So when I got home, I sort of did this memory of place thing. And since I wasn't able to do plein air and it was enjoyable, I really enjoyed sitting and sort of calling back the memory of the place and very loosely rendering from memory what I had seen. And um, yeah, I think I've showed you all the gouache paintings. These were uh, also done with the Art Toolkit palette. These were from one of Emma's um, Patreon drawing sessions. Um, yeah, a lot of this is on Patreon, so I don't want to repeat too much of it. This is my art backpack. It's what I take out plein air painting with me, and it's where I keep my art toolkit. Sometimes I literally do just take my art toolkit because there's really everything that you need in here. I could even store a lot more colored pencils or pens if I wanted to. I just haven't done that because this is this is feels so complete in and of itself. So this I'll, I usually keep in here, and then I keep paper towels and my jar for water and cleaning my brush because I believe very strongly in carrying out the water that you use and not dumping um, paint water on the ground. And I have clips in here, and then I usually throw my sketchbooks in there along with the art toolkit and that's it then i'm ready to go some of the extra things that i had in there this week were i packed up a little bag of some neo colors and some colored pencils that i used and um this is something that i always have in my art nest oh and this is my homemade wet stay wet palette so i just cut up a sponge from a stay wet palette and cut one of the paper, and I do recycle the paper. 
I rinse it off when I get home and then reuse it. So that's helpful because once you've used it and wet it, it re-wets the second time really easily. And then I try to let it dry out in between so that I don't get issues with mold. Let me get this out of the way. Okay, but the other thing I did this week, this is the little bag that I keep down by my art nest all the time. So the other thing that I have done um, over the last couple of weeks that's been really fun is I've told you guys how much I love this fountain pen that I bought. Um, and I filled it with Noodler's ink and black ink and it's their Noodler's uh, bulletproof. It's the waterproof ink. Really have been having fun with this. And then last week I purchased a set of four of really the cheapest, most inexpensive um, fountain pens that I could find on Amazon. And so what I did was I made a video um, for Patreon where I filled these pens and I did some testing out um, to try the different, different colors of ink. So I filled these with the diamine ink. Um, this was the Oxblood and this was the oxford blue in this one these um you see this is the ink in here you can see the different colors might be hard to see on the camera but and then i filled this one with I think it's called Aurora Borealis and the Diamine. Anyways, I go into a lot more detail about that on my Patreon, but I wanted to just show you guys some of what I've been doing in my art nest with these because I'm finding the fountain pens to be something really fun and relaxing to use in my art nest. So let's see. So this was with the Oxblood that I just, the pen that I just filled. And I hope the color is going to show okay on here. But it's that deep red. And these are, so I had showed you the drawings from Emma Carlyle's drawing session. I went back and did looser versions of them with the um, fountain pen which is so funny because you, when I used to think of fountain pens, I used to think of the opposite. I used to think of very tight, very beautiful handwriting and script and calligraphy. I didn't think of loose expressive work. I talk about that in the video on Patreon about how Louis, Louis Rosignol has inspired me and I show a little bit of his work, how he loosely uses these fountain pens but this was more of that just playing in my art nest with just the fountain pen, nothing complicated. You don't have to have any water or brushes or rags. It's very dry and very neat. And um, so those were all the ox blood. This is the Oxford blue. And I guess maybe I haven't done a drawing yet with the, um, what you call it? I hope uh, uh, YouTube isn't going to ban me for showing a nude, but or whatever. But this is the Aurora Borealis color. I really love that color. So, and this was one I did of Toshi. This was one of Emma's drawing sessions that I did with the black pen. This was one of her sessions. This was the drawing in pencil that I just showed you of the guy sitting in front of the cafe. This was the man and the dog, and then I went and did him in ink. I, this, there's, I show all of this better in the Patreon, but anyways, really having fun with the um, fountain pens. Love the detail that you can get. Yeah, it's been fun working with those. So that's that. Um, and then I think there's some, so that was this. I outlined this ink. This is the ink brushes that I showed you in a previous video. Um, 
Oh, this was a little Matisse copy that I did also with a Sennelier gouache, uh, Sennelier, the Senex gouache. Mm, these were all done with the ink pen. This was with the ink pen, so you can get such fine lines for detail. So anyways, that it's been a busy week. And then in between going out and um, doing things, I haven't felt well. I've had quite a bit of post-exertional malaise. Um, yeah, my page stuck together and ripped. I did have a paper in between them, but I'm going to try to glue that back on with matte medium. So anyways, it's been a busy week, and I have had some punishing fatigue for after each day that I have been active, but I have been a little more active, and that's the important thing. It felt really good to get out. This was when I got home from painting the Connecticut River um, plein air painting with Don and Toshi. When I got home, I think the next day, I didn't quite feel well enough to get out again, so I... Um, did this painting from memory at home of a different area of the Connecticut River. And this again was with the Senex gouache. So it's been a really productive week, um, creative wise. And um, I've really enjoyed doing such diverse work. It's just really st creatively stimulating to dive into a whole bunch of things and move at sort of a quick pace and not get too hung up on anything, on perfectionism with anything. I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope that it is um, creatively inspiring for you to get out some different things and to play with them. So I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys in the comments. What should our magic word be? Um, how about art toolkit? We can You can write art toolkit in the um, comments below to let me know that you've made it all the way through the video. And I'm looking forward to chatting with you guys in the comments. Um, yeah, it's it's been it's been a journey, and I'm really grateful to you guys for sticking sticking with me. I have these two consults with these two specialists, and I really do feel like I will be, you know, once I start working with those doctors for the um, mast cell issues, that I will be back to feeling great and pumping out, you know, more dynamic videos for you guys. 
But thank you in the meantime for sticking, hanging in with me and being so supportive. And your comments carry me through the worst days. Your comments mean the world to me. Um, I'm so grateful to have all of you in my life. So take care. I want you to know that every time I read one of your comments, I am sending the love right back to you guys. And um, I appreciate you so much. So God bless. Have a great week. I hope that you can dip into your creative practice this week and feel fulfilled and happy and blessed. Okay, guys. God bless. Bye-bye.